All right, so here is one of the problems from the homework that you guys asked about. Um, specifically, we are looking at part C. So um, that's the one we're going to be tackling right now. This is a problem or super reminiscent of what I did in the lecture videos. So uh, if you haven't watched those, you probably should go back and do that first. I think it explains a little bit better and shows a little bit better. Anyway, so <clears throat> it says the region R, which is that region up there, uh, is the base of a solid. And for, for this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis. So it's saying that we're taking slices perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're taking slices in that way. Okay, and maybe those are a little thick, right? But you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and turn that size down so you can see the slices a little bit better. So we're thinking about taking slices like this. Now ultimately realize that they ultimately have no thickness um, because we are taking like an infinitely small slice and they are solely bounded in the region R, which is why I'm erasing that little extra stuff right there. Now I said each of these cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. So what does that look like? That's where the first video probably becomes super, super important for you. If you watch the first video, you know that that means that these are squares and they're probably built, you could either think about them being built upward, so upward from this, sorry about those little tiny lines, right? Maybe those are actually beneficial though because it really shows us um, what these slices might be like. Right, so they have some thickness to them. Ah, can't get it to do what I want there. So these are squares. So if I pull that out, and it really doesn't do it justice right now, but if I pull that, that slice out and I lay it down, so I kind of fold it down, it says that you'd see this square, and that's what I was really trying to show you over here when I kind of built it up this way and tried to three-dimensionally show you it's kind of leaning back in there. So <clears throat> each of the cross sections is a square. Write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid. So this is where that acronym becomes really nice again. For SEVI. So first of all, do I have a picture? Yes, I do. Second of all, do I have uh, a rectangle? Yeah, that's what those pink things were, right? <clears throat> uh, third, do I have a slice? Yeah, that's what this was trying to show, and that's what this is showing when it's laid down. And that last one is super important to see it laid down. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to understand um, dimensions of this square. Where is it coming from? So I know that this right there is really kind of that bottom here, you know, and it's just built up. That's the way that I see it. You could also build it back. There's some people that I see building them back. Um, but either way, I know that that's the, that line, that slice line in the region R. So now I need to find the area. Well, what do I know? I know the purple is really the difference between F and G. Now the question becomes, which one's the top function? I know that cosine, a cosine function, is going to start up at its maximum, and I know the cosine maximum here is 4. Um, and then I know cosine really has that shape of that top curve more than the bottom one, right? So I know that this is really more the shape of cosine. So I know that the top curve in this case is the cosine curve. So that means that that purple slice, or that purple length, is really going to be g of x subtract f of x. You know, going back to did, distance is difference. So I know that. Cool. So that's that side length. But what was I trying to find? Well, go back real quick. I was trying to find the area of this slice. So how would I find the area of this slice? Well, it's a square. All sides are the same. So I can just take that length, and I have to realize that this whole thing is the length, and now I can just square it, and it becomes the area of this square slice, this cross section. 
Okay. Now, after that, I need to find the volume. Well, how do I make this a volume? I give it that little tiny thickness that it's supposed to have, right? You know, kind of built back that way. And that thickness, if I look over here, is really, you know, the thicknesses are, are just our dx, our change in x, because they're infinitely thin. So there's my dx. And then last, I want to integrate, right? So integrate, all right, that's not a big deal. I want to add up all these slices, but from where to where? Well, look where I started making my slices. If I go back up in the picture, I would start making these slices at zero because that's where the region R started. And I'd keep making these slices until I get to two. So that gave me my bounds of integration. And there you have it. In the end, I now have the integral expression that gives me the volume of the solid.